Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Studio Live today, and uh, a different kind of show here today, which is GarageBand Help Desk. So if you are having issues with GarageBand, if you uh, have questions, if you're working on a GarageBand project and you can't quite get things to come together and you have questions, then drop those in the chat here right now. Uh, if you're watching on the replay, uh, we love you just as much. Just leave your comments down in the comments and myself or someone from the Studio Live Today community will circle back and uh, be able to help you out. Uh, hello to the folks who are here live. Apologies for the false start there. We are up and away now. If you do have a question, that you want to ask, what I need you to do is put question in the title. So question and then your question. That way I just know that that particular chat is not just you saying g'day to myself and the other members, but you actually asking a question. I'll give you a bit of info about uh, about the show and then we'll jump straight into it. Uh, so GarageBand Help Desk brought to you by Studio Live today. So uh, yes, I'm, I'm my own sponsor at the moment. Uh, but no, I do really appreciate your support. If you're looking for ways to support the channel, here's what you can do. You can watch this and all the other videos here on the channel. You can head over to my gear guide at studiolivetoday.com slash gear. They are a bunch of affiliate links to all the gear that I personally use in the home studio. So it's stuff that I've used and tested and if you are looking for some studio gear. And uh, most of those links are to Amazon and eBay and places where you can get things sent to you because it's more important than ever that we get things delivered because none of the stores are open right now. Uh, you can also make a donation or join me on Patreon and there's links to my PayPal and links to my Patreon down below as well if you wanted to get involved. So I will remind you of that a few times throughout the show because once again, it uh, it, do it doesn't come for free. I can stream to free to uh, YouTube and Facebook, but uh, all the things, all the, all the storage, all the web hosting, all of the, um, the gear that I buy that to review and use, that all does come at a cost. However, I realize it's not exactly the best time for a lot of people. So please do not go out of pocket yourself to support me. It, it's all good, uh, but uh, people often ask, how do I support the channel? That's how you do it. Uh, there's also at uh, the garage, there's a few resources. So what I wanted to do before we jump into this is whenever I get a question, uh, I tend to push people towards some of the some of my favorite garage band resources. So we're going to go through a few of those right up front here. If we come in here, uh, see, this is why Pete's so organized, you know. I should have had my screen shared. I should have had everything going on. I should have had, you know, my audio working, but apparently not. This is uh, one of the places that I recommend you go, <laughs> my own website, studiolivetoday.com. But this one in particular is studiolivetoday.com slash garageband. And this is my GarageBand iOS FAQ. I've showed you this before. Up the top here, we've got a bunch of links here to all of my different video series. So if you're just getting started with GarageBand, you can learn all about it, what you need to do and how you can get going. Uh, we've then got a link, of course, to Patrick's GarageBand guide if you're on a Mac that's where you need to go. Head over to the GarageBand guide. He has a bunch of stuff. And then we've got an alphabetical order of all of the questions. And I found this super handy myself because when I get asked questions on the channel, I tend to jump over here and, uh, and point to the answers. And then uh, I give people this link. And then the next time they have a question, they can ask it here first and then uh, usually get the answer and self-serve it which is cool. I always love getting questions. I love talking to folks. But if you can self-serve the answer, then even better. You don't have to wait for me because sometimes I'm two, three, 12 days behind on my emails and messages and you don't want to be waiting around for me if that is the case. The other place, and I know many of you are already aware of this if you are a GarageBand user, is the GarageBand users Facebook page. And that looks a little something like this. Here it is, GarageBand users, uh, myself, uh, Ron, Ward, Steve, uh, who's here on the stream, uh, all of the moderators and admins that uh, help out over there will definitely help you. If you're not already a member of this one, of the GarageBand users Facebook group, you definitely should. It is a great place to go to get support, to get help, to get all the things that you need. One other place that I actually really like uh, and that is the GarageBand Reddit. So if you uh, are a Reddit user, jump over to Reddit. There's a bunch of cool Reddit forums. There's the iPad Musician. There's uh, a bunch of music and songwriting groups. Uh, but yes, if you've never used Reddit before, you just go to reddit.com and then search for GarageBand and you will find it straight away. I, I don't use it a lot. I normally come in here and create a post and then go in and respond to all the posts. But yeah, you can see here we've got a bunch of communities and one of those is the GarageBand community. So uh, that is another place that you can go if you 
want support, if you want to chat GarageBand, if you want to talk GarageBand. But we're here today to talk about GarageBand for the next uh, nearly two hours now. We're going to say hello to a few folks that are here live, and I'm way behind on the chat. So let's do that, and then we'll jump into some questions. Hello to you, uh, Henbro. Uh, you grew 100 subs last night. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's always very, very cool. Uh, hello to Jade Starr, who... Uh, <laughs> It was one of the people who helped me realise that there was no audio at the start. Uh, we've got Benedict Stewart, who's here from Scotland. Bubba from the US of A, from Illinois. We've got Aman Gianni. Hello to you. Uh, good good uh, things there, Jade Star. Welcome to the show. If you want a question, throw a question in front. That will really help me out. Uh, yes, and everyone telling me that I had no audio. <laughs> uh, Foxy Nirvana. Hello to you. Good to have you here. Yes, uh, clearly epic. Yes, that was when we got the audio up and running and we're all good to go now. Um, Dave Fiano, good to have you here, my friend. Um, yes, I know you had a couple of questions and you've, you've replied to an email of mine. Maybe we'll talk about that. I'll, I'll jump in and try and find that. Because we've got plenty of, uh, of time, we'll be able to talk about a lot of things. Um, we have audio. I can hear you now. Good. So everyone's assuming <laughs> there's some blooper clip. Yeah, there you go. That could be the blooper clip. I could be. It could be my face going... And then we could just put any audio we like. There you go. Go in and go in and rip that, and then you can make Pete say whatever you want. That could be a bit of fun. Um, who else is here? Sion, I think I saw you here. Yes, 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 yes. And he does have a question. We'll just jump straight into the questions here. Um, I, have you downloaded Synthmaster One for iPhone and the free Filter Step AUV plugin? I haven't, <laughs> not yet. But they are definitely things that I need to do. You know what I'm going to do? As we go today, I'm going to make notes because uh, I get to the end of these shows and then I forget things. So Synthmaster One and what's the other one? Filter Step AUV Three. I'm going to check these out. And that was from my man, Sion. So, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to keep some notes here so that we can actually, uh, after this, if there's things I don't talk about or we don't get time to, when uh, then we can get back to it. Clearly epic. Uh, hey, he knows the GBU group. I don't know if people want to want me to reveal your secret identity, Steve. But, um, yeah, you, you definitely do know it well. Uh, let's see who else is here saying hello. I think I missed someone. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, here we go. Yes, we can hear you now, Pete. Paul Dog Holmes. Uh, Paul Hog Holmes. Hogs, dogs. We got it all. Got it all going on. Uh, da, 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 Dan Dan Marino. Hello to you. Uh, first time listener, first time caller. Good to have you on board. I do love seeing all of the regular names, all the familiar faces, but I also love to see brand new folks here that haven't been here before. So let's uh, let's give you a little bit of information. Oh, Solrak, hello to you. Uh, how are you going? I hope you're doing well. And uh, Jim Bird, I'll jump back to your question in a moment. Just wanted to say hello and uh, get cr cracking on here. So uh, I've got my got my things over here. So we've gone through some of the resources that you can use here. We're going to answer a bunch of questions, and then I've got a few sort of tips and topics that I'm planning to talk about if there's not enough questions to get us through. But Given that I normally do an hour and at the end of that, we've still got questions unanswered, um, I, I don't think we'll struggle to fill the time slot here today. But we shall see and we, we shall uh, see what's going on. Um, yeah, just want to echo Dan's sentiments. Hope everyone is safe at the moment. Uh, like I've said, um, we're not going to go into a heap of detail because this is a show about music and garage band, but it is also about the community and I hope everyone is being safe and uh, doing the right thing by yourselves and your friends, family and community because it's weird, but the best thing you can do right now is stay the heck away from everybody and uh, for those of us who are on the introverted side that like to spend time in our audio cave it's not a hard thing to do but I also know that there's many of you that are social people that like to get out and about and like to spend time with other people and I feel for you because if it was the opposite way around and I was being forced to go and be with people all the time I know what that would be like. So I'm trying to feel some empathy for you, my extroverted brethren and sister. And um, let's get in to what else was I talking about here? Yeah, so we're going to go through that. Now, I need to set up, I use an app called Reflector 3. We're going to do, we've got some time, so we're going to do a few things here to uh, show you some things. So Reflector 3 is the app that I use to, <laughs> to reflect my iPad onto my a PC screen because I actually use a PC. I use uh, the StreamYard platform to stream my, uh, to stream here on StreamYard. Let's try that again. I use my PC and I use StreamYard, which is in the Chrome browser to stream this particular live stream to YouTube and to Facebook. But if I want to show my iPad screen, I've got to use AirPlay, which PC doesn't support. However, there is an app called Reflector 3. It's about $20 and it's a very cool app because you can AirPlay your screen to your PC 
a screen and capture it like we're going to do now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my screen mirroring. It's just going to ask me to enter a four digit code, which I need to enter over here on this other keyboard that you can't see it's off screen, but this is connected up to my iPad. I then, and this is where it gets a bit clunky because I have a, a bunch of different things on my screen. I bring the iPad screen over onto my PC screen that I'm sharing with you here. And then if everything has worked effectively, what we should find is if we click this button, there it is. So now you can see my iPad screen and we can demonstrate some things as we go. So this will make it good. I won't just be able to answer questions verbally, but hopefully I can show you visually as well. And we've got the sound plugged in here, boop. So it should also work with our sound. Let's just give it a quick test by hitting play and turn the volume up and hit stop. Cool, and it's coming through the actual sound. So the audio quality will be okay coming through there. It won't be so good with the video because you'll notice it's about five frames a second. So it'll be a bit laggy. Uh, I'll try and move slowly and not actually do too much at a time. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're going to be able to do here. And uh, I'm loving, by the way, you notice that I've got my cursor here. I've, I've put it down a little bit. If you saw the video during the week, I showed you how to set up a mouse and keyboard on your garage bed, or on your iPhone or iPad running iOS 13.4 or iPad OS 13.4. So I'm rocking my, uh, my Logitech MK345 mouse and keyboard here. And they're plugged in via USB, via the Lightning to USB 3 adapter. I've talked about those a heap, but if you're new to the channel and you're new to connecting things uh, and you want to learn about that, go over to uh, Studio Life today.com slash garage band and we'll be able to help out that's a long time we've got to get to some questions don't we well, let's jump in and get started so jim hi pete uh i'm unable to share my gb mix to any other program if i try to send an uncompressed wave file i'm having uh, same problems loud white noise distortion less often uh, so jim uh, contacted me during the weekend and posted on some of the forums as well asking about this so he had a problem where he was playing back a garage band file and it was getting some sort of loud white noise kind of things that were causing problems. And we couldn't work out whether it's what, what was causing it. Is it GarageBand? Is it the software? Is it plugins? Is it his iPad? What's actually happening there? So I haven't come across this personally. The one thing that has happened for me before is when using GarageBand, some plugins. So uh, there's one, Fuzz Plus 3 is one of the plugins that does this in particular. So let's just see if we can make it happen. I know. Let's see if Pete can break GarageBand. Uh, but if you come in here and we go to plugins and EQ and edit, Let's add, oh, how cool is that now that you've got the cursor? When you're over something, it kind of moves to that. It kind of snaps to it. It's taking a little while to get used to, but it's actually a lot easier than having to get right on the thing because you know when it's near, it'll just snap over. doesn't do it for things like this for these buttons, but some of the things like that, it'll pop up like that. It's pretty cool. Uh, so let's come in. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, oh, see, here's the thing. I've got the I've got the natural scrolling now, so it scrolls the right way. Um, but now I'm getting used to having to scroll it up and down, and it actually scrolling the way I expect it to scroll. Because the way it worked before is when you push up, that would scroll down, and when you pull down, it would scroll up. It's an Apple thing. They fixed it now, um, and you can change it to the right way. But I'm still getting used to that now. So let's add in Fuzz Plus Three on this one. Now, what I always recommend is that you turn, see, it, just, it cranks the levels on all this stuff. If I turn that down and we play this back, well, has it already broken it or is it just nothing playing? I think it's already broken it. <laughs> so it it's killed the playback. Sometimes you get a, little, a, a sort of kind of screechy sound before it actually kills the playback. What happens if we turn it back off? There it is. Let's turn it back on. Yeah, it's just giving us nothing. And then it, even when you turn it back off, it goes away. You have to stop, reset, play again, and it comes back. So let's see if we can just uh, adjust these, turn all this all the way down, and turn it on. Because it is usually a plug-in problem. No, it's just, it's just not working at all now. Um, so yeah, it's unfortunate that these sort of things happen. But there's, another, there's other plugins that have the same sort of problem where they will create this. So Jim, I don't know if you've got plugins on your track, and I don't know if that's potentially one of the causes. Uh, but yeah, maybe take a look at that and see if that's the case. Um, other than that, I'm not sure. Now, the other part of your question was, uh, I'm unable to share my GBMU mix to any other program if I try to send an uncompressed WAV file. So I wanted to show this because there is a known, well, there's a known bug. I say it's a known bug, but um, Apple haven't really reported on it. I just know it because I know it. Um, but yeah, there's a bug at the moment where if we actually come in here and go select, so this is how we share a file, right? Actually, I'll, I'll just pop you off the screen there, Jim, so that other folks can see this. 
Right, so we'll go back to the start. So here we are in GarageBand. We want to share this project here as an uncompressed WAV file. Oh, hasn't popped Jim off. There we go. Uh, what we need to do, we need to tap select in the top right corner, not plus. Oy, that little, that little um, thingy kind of snaps to the plus. There we go, select. And then we're going to select chickens on Howard Street. We're going to hit the share button here in the bottom. Have I been, uh, have I been showing all of that and then not showing the screen? Hope not. <laughs> uh, you were hearing it anyway. You weren't seeing it, but I was adding, and uh, hopefully I explained it well enough. Whoo, Pete, really? What? All right, let's start that again, shall we? <laughs> so top right, we come up here, we hit select. We come to Chickens on Howard Street. We hit the share button in the bottom left corner, and then we hit song. But here's where it gets weird, because we've got uncompressed wave, we hit share. Now, on this first screen, this is not where we actually do it because we can't save to files here. If we hit save to files here, it creates a weird ghost file. In fact, let's do it. I'll show you what it does so you can actually see what not to do and then we'll circle back and I'll show you what to do. So it's gonna export the song. It's doing its thing. I'll have a drink while it does this. It's gonna create this weird file, which I'll show you. The way to fix this is to use open in and then save to files. A bit croaky too today. I played some SingStar last night for the first time in a long time. We were going to play like three or four songs. Uh, you know what it's like. If you've played SingStar 20 tracks later, we're like, okay, do we go to bed? Yeah, we go to bed now. <clears throat> so yeah, that was a bit of fun. Uh, so it's exporting. It's, it looks like it's doing its thing. It looks like it's working, yeah. But here's the problem. When it pops up like this, it's going to say, yeah, we'll save this to a place. Let's just throw it in my GarageBand file transfer folder so I know where it is. And then if we hit done... Um, we'll go over to files, so we'll need to go into the files folder, files uh, location, on my iPad, GarageBand for iOS, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, GarageBand file transfer, and there it is. So here it is, like it looks like a WAV file, yeah? So it's here, chickens on howardstreet.wave, but you know how, notice how it doesn't actually have the WAV file, like the little thing, like everything else does? Yeah, it's only got the, it's only got that. So when you go to open it, it's like, Yep, here it is. It's 38.3 megabytes, but you can't do anything with it. You try to share it, you try to play it, you try to use it. doesn't work at all. So that's not what we want. What we want to do is if we come back over to GarageBand, is the way that we actually need to do it is to use the open in. So let's just show you this. We're going to share. Uh, we're going to go to song. We're going to do the same thing again. But this time, when it pops up here, we're going to tap open in. And it's going to come up here. It's going to export our song. It's doing its thing. It's grinding its gears. And then eventually it's going to, well, eventually it'll actually come up there and it should be good to go. We will, uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm just going to check, just going to check exactly how um, everyone's going. Yes. <laughs> Jade Star, uh, while this exporting, would say hello to a few folks. Jade Star says, uh, I'm loving social distancing. <laughs> Life is normal. It's a little bit normal for me uh, as well. And uh, yeah, the ha hands not touching hands. Exactly. It's like, the, remember the hands across, well, hands across America. I don't remember it, but I remember the, the memes of it on things like The Simpsons. Anyway. Uh, so here we go. This is what we need to do. So we've done the open in and now you notice we've got all of our audio apps across the top here. So we can actually choose to send it to different audio apps and do things with it or we can save to file. So let's show you the difference if we save this also to the GarageBand file transfer folder and then come out and go into files. It'll pop up there uh, and it actually creates two copies because it actually puts it, it puts it in GarageBand file transfer by default, just so that you've got a copy there, and then it creates another copy there. But you notice here, it's a different file size, and it's actually got this waveform. And the beautiful part is, if we play it, we get the sweet, dulcet tones of Chickens on Howard Street. And there we go including my very out of time drums. So hopefully that helps you out, Jim, and anyone else having this problem. It's a bug. I've done a couple of videos on it, but I'm still getting questions because people don't know about the problem until they're getting to the point where they're exporting a track. And most of us don't export tracks all the time. You might only export a track, you know, every now and then occasionally. So it may not be a problem that you come across all the time. Uh, let's uh, continue on here and see what other folks have got to say. Yes, Jade has uh, got the Reflector app there. Yes, by Air Squirrels. They are the people behind Reflector. So if you do want to reflect your thing to your other thing, uh, it works well. Um, Sion says, I've been testing a 4X Camera Maker and it allows me to see my iPhone camera recording on my iPad. 
iPad, iPhone camera on my iPad. Useful if you want to record videos from Apple devices. Very cool. I will have to, uh, I'll have to check that one out myself. Uh, Timothy, hello to you. <laughs> so many live shows, I can't. Yeah, no, I, it's like, I can't even. Um, but yes, and uh, yes, want to wa watch them all. Yeah, I can't, I can't watch them all. Yeah, exactly. And if you can't watch all the live shows, that's cool. That's why I thought having a two-hour show today would be cool. People can come in, can come out. You can watch the replay. I'll try to put some sort of timestamps or at least some of the things we talk about. Speaking of which, I'm going to make some notes as we go so that, uh, yeah, again, I can come back and put in what we talked about and when. So thank you to Jim Bird. We talked about... Uh, we talked about exporting audio files, uh, but the first thing we talked about was the, uh, yeah, so the white noise and, and like distortion that you're getting in your tracks. Still not sure what's causing that. And uh, yeah, definitely sorry to hear about it. Nothing worse than when you're trying to create a song and it doesn't work for you. Uh, Red, yes, uh, in the, the happy hour show that we do on a, on a, what is a Sunday afternoon for me, Saturday night, so tomorrow night, if you're tuning in on that one, uh, then yes, you can say Red because we'll, we'll have a few beverages and we'll have a, we'll have a bit of a time. Uh, question here from Dan Marino says, uh, I've played and recorded for years, use GarageBand now. Is there anything, uh, we can share our projects with strangers that can actually sing? <laughs> Sorry if there isn't, it's obvious. Uh, it's a really good question. Um, so let's, let's talk about this for a few minutes and I'll share some of my experience. And again, if you have your own experience, please, uh, let us know, uh, let us know in the comments in the chat here would be great to hear from you. So this one, I'm just, I'm, again, I'm making notes. So this is, uh, yeah, sharing uh, projects with others, uh, for collaboration. Yeah. So it is totally possible. Uh, a lot of folks over on the GarageBand users Facebook group are doing a heap of different collaborations with each other at the moment uh, and have been for some time. So it's definitely possible to do and there's a couple of ways to do it. So why don't I show you the ways that we can actually do this and I'll do it pretty quick because I know many of you have seen the videos. Uh, if you go over to studiolivetoday.com slash garageband, look for collaboration. There'll be some complete videos showing these processes. But while we're here, let's just say that Chickens on Howard Street is such a great track that I want to share it with other people so that we can all collaborate together. Well, here's how we do it. The number one way is we can select on it the project. Now, if they're using GarageBand, this is the way we can do this. I'm just going to pop your question off the screen there for a sec, Dan. Uh, we come in here, we tap this particular project, and then we hit share down the bottom left. We're then going to share the project as opposed to the song that we shared before. So I'm going to tap on project. And then here, what you'll notice is if we scroll down, uh, what do we need to do? Do we need to do open in first? Uh, where's the ad? Oh, you know what? The reason this isn't working is that I'm... I'm not on my iCloud drive. Well, let's just go back because, so I, I did that to test you out because you can't actually share with people from your on my iPad location. You can only do it from your iCloud drive location because what it does is it saves a copy on iCloud drive. It then shares that copy to everyone else's iCloud drive and then everyone has access to the same file. So let's instead come in here and say that we uh, just got this acoustic demo that I'm doing here. We'll just download this because it's sitting on my iCloud drive at the moment. And uh, by the way, that, that's what these little cloud icons are. If it's something on iCloud drive, this means that they're on your drive, they're not on your device. So what we need to do is tap it first to download it. It'll then open up. Even if we don't want it to open up, it'll open up. It'll say, here it is. I found it for you, Pete. And I'll be like, thanks, GarageBand, but I didn't want to do that. Uh, and now you can see it's got this cloud icon, meaning it's uploading back to the cloud. So all those changes I just made, which were none, it's uh, it's now uploaded. There it goes. It's done. So what I'm going to do is tap on select. We're going to tap select here. And then we are going to share down the bottom left and project. And hopefully this time, hey, there we go. Add people. So this is what we've got. We've got the ability to add some people to this. And then what we can do is you can add it via Messenger, by Facebook, via Gmail, however you want to do it. There's some share options that you have down here now. So if we tip, tick up to tap on that one, uh, only, only the people I invite can share it or anyone with the link. That could get really fun and really dangerous if I just put a link out to a project to everyone <laughs> and you could all go into my iCloud drive and start changing things. I wouldn't suggest doing that unless you're really comfortable. Uh, and then can make changes or view only. So what I'd suggest you do is only people you invite and they can make changes. That way they can actually 
add things to your track. So I've used this uh, with a bunch of people before to actually collaborate on songs, to create songs together, to uh, to do joint uh, joint things. And for exactly what you're saying there, if you've got an instrumental track, you want someone to add some vocals, you can actually send them the track. They then open it up. They record their vocal takes. So let, let's pretend that, uh, that someone had shared this with me. I don't even remember what this track is. Um, so let's come in here. And if we play this, play it back. One, two, three, four. I don't know what I'm doing here. But so let's just say that uh, we just had these here and I wanted someone to record vocals. All they then need to do is come here and oh, don't hit the amp. Still getting used to, still getting used to this, uh, the way this new mouse works. It's a bit weird. Uh, they can come in here and then they can record some vocals. So we just put monitoring on. Hello, hello. And we hit record and... Etc. And then when they're done, all they need to do is go back to the project like this. And it's made their changes there. And it's automatically going to upload those to the cloud. So you don't have to do anything about this. So it's just going to update with all the changes that come there. And then it's good to go. So this is the, the easiest way, uh, a cool way to actually share your stuff around. Um, and yeah, uh, hopefully that helps out. The other way to do it. And this is the way I prefer. So the, the advantages of that way is it's all automated. It all sits on the cloud. But the disadvantage is you get a bunch of different versions. So as soon as you start working on this, and even across two different devices. So if I grabbed my iPhone and opened that track and started playing with it, and then back on my iPad, depending when I save it, sometimes it'll say, oh, we got some conflicting changes. Here's one version. Here's another version. What you can do to, to work around that is actually this second method that I'm going to show you here, or make sure that only, what I do is I, I play it like tennis. So I, I'll email someone I'm collaborating with. and I'll be like, it's yours. I've saved it out. I'm not going to touch it until you tell me. They go and make their changes, add their tracks. They save it and close out and they say, Bunk, back into your court, you do your things. That's what I'd recommend doing if you are doing this collaboration method. Method two is the zip and share. So again, we'll tap select, we'll tap on this one, but this time down here in the bottom right, oops, you know what? I haven't worked this well because we need to be in the files app. See, this trips up me almost every time because how much does this look just like this? <laughs> it's the same exact thing, except that here in the files app, what we can do is we can select uh, let's just use chickens on Howard Street this time. We can tap on it. And then in the bottom right, under more, we can compress it. And what this is going to do is it's going to zip it up, zip it into a zip file like that. And then what we can do from here is we can use, well, you can tap on the zip file apparently, and that'll open, <laughs> that'll open it up. I'm going to have so many chickens on Howard Street on my, uh, on my iPad here. It's going to be ridiculous. So that will open it up, but it also creates this zip file. And what you can do with that zip file is actually then just put it on Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, OneDrive, wherever you like, and then share a link. So when I've been working, I've been working with Steve, uh, who's just about to release a very cool song. I might give you a sneak peek of that in a moment, mostly because I need a bathroom break. <laughs> But I've been working on a track with Steve. Uh, Jade's been working on the same track. And we've been using this method, the method of zipping up the project, putting it on Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, and then emailing or messenger, messengering and sharing that file. It works really well, really effective way to do things if you are trying to share. So thank you for your questions, Dan. Hopefully that helped you and anyone else out with that sort of thing. Uh, hello to Wyatt Tomlin. Can you give me a shout out? I guess I just did. So yes, hello, how are you doing? Uh, I've sent my book out. Oh, cool. I've sent my book out about music production. If you're interested, please check it. It's called Wyatt and the Big Adventure. Very cool. I will check it out. Uh, shoot me an email too. Uh, I always say pete at studiolivetoday.com because sometimes I, I do things in shows and a whole bunch of stuff happens. So if you or anyone has anything you want me to definitely be aware of, can't guarantee I can spend hours and hours like helping or doing personalized things. But if you send me an email there, I definitely do endeavor to do my best to try and get around to everything that comes there. A uh, question here from Sion. Any ideas how to stop the caps lock button from changing the keyboard type? It's not showing up in the settings. Change the cap, uh, stop the caps lock button from changing the keyboard type. This is an interesting one. I'm going to put this because uh, I don't actually know anything about the caps lock button changing the keyboard type. 
Uh, let's, uh, I'll grab my keyboard. I've got my iPad here and I have my keyboard. So let's have a, a quick experiment with this, shall we? And see what the caps lock key actually does. So if I hit the caps lock key, nothing's actually happening here, but obviously I'm not typing anything. Uh, oh, I keep, I keep reopening that. Uh, let's just see if we can like rename something. Oof, not doing well. So if I just went here and we went to like rename it more, uh, know how to rename things. I'm doing really well here today. Where can we go? Why don't we go out to, uh, we'll go to OneNote, shall we? I'll just bring up my OneNote. I'll just pop that over there in case it brings up something that is highly confidential and top secret. Unlikely. It hasn't. It's just brought up the lyrics to my song, Imagination. Uh, so yeah, if we tap in here, we can just edit with the keyboard, blah, blah, blah. So the caps lock is on. We take it off. The caps lock seems to bring up the mouse cursor, but I don't know what else it does. I'm probably missing something, almost definitely missing something here, my friend. Uh, so hopefully someone else will help you and we'll circle back uh, to get that done. Um, we'll circle back and answer it if, if anyone's got anything that they can suggest to help with that one. Uh, hello, David Odgers. Good to have you here on board. Uh, I'm enjoying dabbling with the Mini, Mo Mini Moog Model D synthesizer, but there is a way to use it inside GarageBand. I'm glad you asked because yes, indeed there is. And it gives me an opportunity to play around with the Mini Moog. <laughs> so let's uh, let's have a play with this now. I'll make sure that I've actually got it installed on this iPad first of all. So hold the line while I just check this out. Uh, Mini Moog Model D. I do. Okay, we're good. So the Mini Moog Model D, we'll load, it, we'll load up just the standalone app to start with. If we come out over here, there it is. Oh, I knew I'd do that. It's really loud, and I'll just turn it down a bit on my mixer here so I don't blow your ears off. So there it is, the Mini Moog. Now, I haven't actually tried this, so as I always say with, um, with questions and with live shows, could be great, could be a train wreck, you never know. And I'm still showing you, I'm still showing you my... Uh, my banner there. Go away. Thank you. Come again another day. Thank you. All right. So if we come in here to create song, we've got here my audio record. What am I doing? Audio recorder. What we need to do is actually go across. And we're going to need to find our external instruments. Now, the Moog Model D, hang on, Moog Model, well, whatever it is, uh, it doesn't support audio unit extensions. So we have to choose inter-app audio as the instrument type. So I'm going to tap on that one. And then up here in the top left, the Model D is there. So we're going to tap on that one. And what this is going to do is going to open it up. There it is. So there's GarageBand in our top corner. And this is going to use it as an inter-app audio instrument, which means that we can actually record into GarageBand and actually play something here. So let's give this a go, shall we? If we hit record. <laughs> let's try that again. I just wanted to do that to show you how not to do it. We'll tap to go back to GarageBand. You can see there it's recorded it. And look, it's recording it. I know it's, I know it's supposed to be sort of pretty intense, but it's recorded it pretty heavily. So if we undo that, and then here we can tap back on that to go back to here. Uh, where's, where's our gain? I haven't played with this enough volume. Let's just turn the volume down a bit, shall we? All right, so let's record this in. We'll hit record and. And that's recorded that sucker in. We'll hit pause. Now we can go back to GarageBand. Badump. And there it is. So there is our waveform recorded into GarageBand. We can play it back. And there's a few problems with this. You'll notice it's an audio waveform. So the playing that I played in there is going to sit in there forever. That's what you're going to always see. So that's a small bit of a problem, isn't it? Uh, because if you make a mistake, there's no quantizing, there's no editing. You literally have to like chop it up. You'd have to come in here and you'd have to do some like really fine editing because there's no uh, audio unit to plug in. So AUV3, like there is in other apps. And maybe later in the show, since we have two hours, I'll show you another app that does something similar, but uses audio unit. Maybe we'll play around with the, um, the sax. What is it called? 
This is, uh, I can't remember the name of it. The very cool sax plugin. We'll get there. Uh, all right. So that's what we can do there. And then of course uh, we can layer this up. Let's just uh, let's just oh, external again. I'm not I'm not used to this new mouse thing. Sorry, I'm going to say that about 15 times. Oh, look at this is fun. Check this out. <laughs> Ah, uh, garage band, you never never disappoint to uh, do something weird and wacky. Anyway, let's go in we could just add in like a beat sequencer to this and let's just do a random roll the dice. Let's see if it fits. Uh, we'll hit record. I mean, it would if I was in time. So if I play the first one in time, it probably would work out. But yeah, that's how you can bring in your external instruments. And then you can, the beauty part is you can layer this stuff up. So you can come back here and find any other external instruments you like. And again, some will interrupt audio, but if you go to AU, then you can use any of these instruments. So I'll show you a quick version of this to just to show the difference right now. So if I wanted to grab, say, the Ravenscroft 275, the very, very cool piano here, uh, then that will load up here. And this one, you can see here, it's actually got the GarageBand keyboard. So, so that's going to be the difference here. And I'll show you when we record what it actually does. So there's the difference, right? Uh, this time we can actually edit it. So you can see there that bung note. If we just solo this book, solo this instrument, like... So we played that wrong note there. The beauty part of an audio unit instrument is we can come in here and we can edit that sucker. So if we come to that bung note there, we didn't want this one, we can delete it. And then our part. And again, this part's wrong, tap it, delete it. Can change the velocity, can move the notes around if we want to. Can change the length of the notes, can do all of that cool sort of stuff. So that's the benefit of an audio unit plugin over an inter-app audio plugin. So if you've never played around with external plugins, external apps, external instruments, hopefully that gives you a little taste. And uh, the, play around with the, the Model D because it's free at the moment uh, and it's a free. Now, are there any are there any free audio unit instruments? Let's have a look. Because that one, the, the piano I just showed you costs money, I think. Uh, is, this saying that, is this saying that the Model D is audio unit? I could have just lied through my teeth that whole time. Um, let's let's tap it. Is this going to work? Huh. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's just try it. Boom. Forget everything I just said. Apparently, the cool folks at the Moog or whoever make the Moog app uh, have made an audio unit compatible. Um, people in the chat have probably been saying that for the last 10 minutes, saying, Pete, it is audio unit, buddy. But anyway, now you know, <laughs> for apps that are not audio unit compatible, you know exactly how to use those. And those that are, you can use using these. So hopefully that helps you out. And uh, whoever it was that asked the original, David Odgers, who asked the original question. I'm going to put you in my notes here. David Odgers. And we talked about using the mini Moog in GarageBand. Uh, alrighty, so uh, that's, uh, hopefully that helped you out. Let's come back to our comments and see what is going on over there. I'm just going to scroll down and see if anyone's telling me that uh, I got that totally wrong. Uh, yes, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Sion. I, I knew that someone would be in there saying, yeah, it totally supports it. And yes, it's my man, Sion. So yeah, that's it. That's it. All right, let's scroll back on up. <clears throat> uh, and thank, thank you to Dan. Uh, yes, you're welcome uh, for for, the, for answering the previous question. Hopefully that is cool. Um, we'll come back up because I've missed a bunch of stuff. I know, and I will I will miss more and more things as we go on. But uh, I'll try and come back and mop up. That's why I wanted to have all this time because uh, yeah, it takes uh, it takes uh, too long. Um, yeah, and I want to make sure I answer as much as we can because I want you folks to get out there and uh, start creating this weekend. Here's a question. Hello, Dizzy YT. Uh, good to see you. Uh, I don't think I've seen you around the channel before. So question is, how do you make a guitar more emotional? An emotional guitar. This is a, a good question. Um, so if we're talking about either the, the touch guitar or a real guitar, either way is fine. 
the emotional kind of sounds, and depending what you mean by emotional, but some of the effects that I like to use on guitar, why don't we just go with that? So this is a good segue into, I'll bring up a project I've been working on for my buddy Steve. Jade's been working on this project too, and I'm almost positive Steve won't mind me showing and playing a little bit of this in this uh, this show because he's about to release it. I won't play the whole thing unless I do, which I might. <laughs> but uh, let's come in here and uh, open up this track. Now, this is a previous version. Um, Jade has since done some more work on this and has improved it even further. Uh, it's taking a while to actually load. There we go. So it's loaded up here. So this is a great track. Steve put it together. He used some of the he used some of the virtual guitars here, which were were very cool to begin with. And what I did to these to kind of tweak them a little bit is I used a couple of plugins on here. So I'll show you what those are. We come in. Oh, goodness me, I've done it again, haven't I? Here we go. I hadn't shown much anyway, but yes, here it is. The, here is the project. All I've done is opened it up. Um, so here is the guitar, the virtual guitar, and this is why I need a producer. I need someone, if it wasn't for all the social distancing, someone could sit with me. I suppose I could hire my daughter to do it. She'd do it for me. Um, so this is what we could do. And if we look at the plugins and EQ, you'll notice down the bottom here, I've got a bunch of echo and reverb. So I'll, I'll play with those first before I show you all of these that we've put on here to give it some, uh, some flavor. So if we come in here, I've taken off all the plugins that are in there, and we've just got echo and reverb. So if we play this particular guitar part, it's gonna sound like this. So you can hear there, there there's, the, there's the delay, the echo and the reverb. If we take those off, it's gonna sound super dry, right? So that's sort of part one. The first thing I do is add some echo and reverb. The plugins I've used on here, a compressor, well, that just always helps to level out to get you a nice level volume. We've used uh, the Nembrini Crunk V2 just on one of the clean settings, and I've dialed in some, some settings there to give it a little more bass because the virtual guitar is always a bit too treble heavy in my view. So we've used that, and with the crunk in there, it sounds like this. So it sort of deadens the sound a little bit, you might be thinking. But the thing is, when we bring it back into the whole mix, take a listen to this. So it, it, it works kind of kind of good with that. Um, the next thing I put in here is the uh, chorus. So this is again the Nembrini chorus plugin, also for free, also super awesome, uh, worth it, worth a look. And this is where you get that sort of dreamy, atmospheric, emotional sort of effect. So take a listen. So just a little bit of light chorus on there. And then the last thing I've got here is a little EQ. Again, just to roll off because that top end, I just still find it a little bit too much, too top heavy when it comes to these. So. just thickened up just to sit in the mix there. So that's what I did with the virtual guitar in this track. And then if we come all the way down, I added, oh, does this not have my version that I added in? No, this is an earlier version, I think. I'll see if I can find the version where I added in a, a real or an actual physical lead guitar. See, look at all these versions. This is a problem. This is what happens when you use all that sort of file sharing stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's any of these versions. This one looks like it's it's larger, so I'll open this one up. <laughs> it's a bigger file, so it must have some more uh, more things in it. We'll take a look. <coughs> At least I'm on the screen now, so you can actually see what I'm doing. So yeah, here, here we go. So I've added these two guitars. So for a lead guitar sound when I'm playing this, let's take a listen to what this sounds like. It's this one. And once again, the effects we've got here this time... We're using a bunch of reverb here, but the delay we don't actually have on here because most of the delay here is actually part of the amp sim. So if we come in here, I'm using the GarageBand amp simulator on this one. And you can see here, we've got the echo pedal on. If we turn that off, it doesn't have that echo, it's just got the reverb. Turn the echo on. 
and you get that cool atmospheric kind of emotive kind of sound on the guitar. So that's what we have there. Uh, yeah, um, and again, we might we'll, we'll play around with that track because it's such a cool track. We'll be talking more about that later in the show. And uh, thank you to Steve for uh, giving myself and Jay the opportunity to work on that track. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure, and it's a very cool track, and it should be uh, back in action soon. It's back in action. should be released soon. <coughs> well done, Pete. You're doing extremely well today, right? Bit of self-talk. Uh, hello. Who else have we got here? So that was uh, that was Dizzy. Hello to you. Hello, Darren Daniluk. Great to have you on board here. Um, Wyatt, Wyatt Tomlins, and I missed the last couple, but glad I caught this one. Yeah, I'm glad to have you here too. Um, I hope you're all uh, enjoying this and, uh, yeah, getting the getting some information, learning a few things. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so we've got to... So um, how do you add the delay? So Sion was helping uh, with some of the things about delay and other things. And hopefully just showing you that is going to uh, going to help out. Uh, this is the question I get from Kashi J. And I'm going to actually... Uh, let's, let's, let's update my notes here. So we had uh, Dizzy YT uh, was asking about... What were you asking about? That was about... Don't mind me. Just talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Uh, we're talking about guitar, emotional sound. And then, uh, yeah, so Kashi J. Um, yeah, time stretch. It's a tough one because GarageBand doesn't actually allow you to do this. But there are some other apps, and I think some folks in the chat here have already uh, already suggested some things here. Uh, yeah, so Jade says the short answer is you can't. You need an app. Aurea Pro has this feature, but it's an expensive DAW in itself. And I think, yeah, Sion says I use Bloxway for my audio time stretching, though it's pretty much changing me changing the key and tempo and the software automatically scales it. So yeah, I totally need uh, to actually do this. I totally need to uh, to play around with this and get a way to do it because I get this question an awful lot. The beautiful part of this is we are only at half time, so we still have over an hour to go where we can answer some more questions here about GarageBand. So if you do have questions, please drop them in the chat here. If you're watching on the replay, uh, drop your comments down below and uh, I will circle back and answer those. We've got a heap more shows here on the weekend. Tomorrow, uh, we have the the home studio Q&A, so a more generic Q&A show that is here live on the channel. And then uh, on the follow, uh, following that, I'll be doing another happy hour show. And then we have GarageBand Weekly on uh, Sunday afternoon or Monday morning, depending where you are in the world. And I do believe that Jade is also doing a live show as well this weekend, which will be so much fun. All right, let's get back to the questions. Uh, so Dave Fiano, hello to you. So the question and answer ish, all tracks muted bug with all tracks unmuted and none soloed can be fixed in Mac version by adding a basic track. Can't solve for iOS though. So Dave has been uh, contacting me about this question and I'll put it out here because maybe you or someone you know has an answer to this question. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a look. Uh, <laughs> There was no sound. Was there no sound coming through? The stream is not working. Here's the sound down. Ah, dead air. No sound. So there you go. <laughs> and he, he, here is the man behind the song. Still waiting for the confirmation email to get it released. Well, it should be released soon. And uh, yeah, and I apologize that there was no sound. I don't know why that wasn't coming through and playing back. Ay, 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 ay. So I've had a few sound related issues here today, but we're going to get back on track. I promise. Uh, thank you for sticking around during the time where it just went to dead air. I appreciate that. Uh, coming back to Dave's question. Sorry. All the way back up here. If all the track tracks are muted, what actually happens here? Let's have a look, see. Uh, let me just do a quick audio check here and to make sure to make sure that you are actually hearing things on the stream here. So are you hearing audio when I play back? If we do this. Come on, come on, come on. Have a few iPad issues too. So that's what I was trying to play. That's what I was trying to play before, but uh, yeah, oh, it's... Let's just see. Got the right audio. Yep, so the audio is coming through my Zoom and it should be playing that audio as well. Uh, I haven't had this many issues for quite some time. Audio's back. Yes, yes, yes. 
hopefully. Just let me know if the audio is coming through there and we'll get back onto this. So Dave Fiano, <laughs> back to this. Clearly an hour is the limit of my live streams and my, my sanity. So all tracks are muted with all tracks unmuted, none soloed. So I think what you're saying is that the problem was that you weren't be you weren't able to play back. If we do, I'll just come and find a smaller track here in GarageBand. Let's bring GarageBand back up over here. So let's just say we came in here and we went back into this track. So with all of them unmuted. So what you should be able to do is if you want to play a particular track, you select just that track and hit the play. And it should play like that, yeah? And if you select multiple tracks, you should get two tracks playing together. If you then mute your tracks, well, it doesn't matter because you still soloed these tracks. If we have them all muted, they're all not going to play. If you start unmuting them, they should come back. But sometimes they're not coming back when you unmute like this. Is that what we're saying with, with this one, Dave? And then, yeah. So what it should mean is that if nothing is anything, then it will mute anything that you mute. As soon as you solo one thing, it mutes all other tracks and then you can solo just those things. So what if there's no bugs and there's no problems, if you have everything like this and then you come in, you should be able to solo whatever tracks you want or you should be able to mute whatever tracks you want. Using one or the other is generally the best idea. All of them off is all off. Uh, I think you're saying that, uh, yeah, that you're having issues where that's not exactly what's happening and it's not exactly working for you. So um, if anyone has experienced anything like that, has any tips for Dave, then uh, yeah, let us know and uh, we will go with that. Uh, I'll, I'll leave that track open for, for future questions here. Um, yeah, so was our audio working there with that, with that muting test? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, loud and clear. Okay, cool. Uh, so hopefully we actually can get our stuff together here today. Come on, people. Me. As Jay said at the start, like, blame your tools, Pete. Yeah, that's always the way we go. Uh, let's find... I did see another question at the top here from Vex. Uh, let me just add Dave's, to, Dave's question to our section here. Dave Fiano was asking about mute and solo bug, just so I know what we're doing. Question, why does GarageBand not recognize my projects when I share them or save them in uh, any drive service available? Says file might be damaged or can't be read. Aha, uh -huh. cool. So you may not have seen earlier in the show, but we actually showed an example of what the problem is with this. And what it basically is, if we come here into GarageBand, what we need to do is if you just try and export the project file. So if we share this, or if you wanted to try and copy this, say over to Google Drive or to OneDrive or to Dropbox directly, it's not going to work. Here's the problem. This project file is recognized as a single .band project file in GarageBand. The problem is though, if you transfer this over to, um, to any other platform, it's actually a folder full of files and it becomes corrupted almost instantly if you try and transfer it as its current state, as a .band project. The only place where it will work is iCloud Drive. So the only place you can do actual sharing is either via iTunes to your Mac or PC and via iCloud Drive. You've got to keep it within the Apple universe. As soon as you go out, it doesn't work. But no problem. The workaround for this is that you simply need to go into your files app. And we've showed this earlier, but I'll just show it really quickly again. Tap on select. Tap on the project there, hit the more button in the bottom right corner, which I realize you can't see because of your question. Hit the more button in the bottom right corner and hit on compress. And this will actually compress that file into a zip file. And then this is the file that you share. And as soon as you tap on that zip file, as you can see, I've done a bunch of times here. As soon as you tap on that zip file, it will actually open up the project file and open it up in GarageBand. So all you need to do is if you're sharing a file from one person to the other and you're getting that file corrupted issue that uh, Vex is having here, all you need to do is make sure you zip up that project file first, send it across, the person unzips it, they make their changes, they zip it back up, they send it to you, you open it. You just can't share it as that .bam project file. So hopefully that helped you out there, my friend. <laughs> Dan Marina says, Mother Nature kicking our ass. Yeah, so that's in my song, Imagination. And uh, yeah, that was, written, uh, that was written when there were bushfires here in Australia, which seems like about a decade ago, but it was only a few months back when Australia were having issues with Mother Nature uh, setting fire to stuff. And now Mother Nature, yeah, kicking our ass again. Uh, let's continue on down here. Do, 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 do. Continuing, we'll see. Uh, Dave Fiano loves the Moog. Yes, it's very, very cool. Very, very fun. Uh, mm, mm, mm. 
So there you go. Uh, Jade has also got another suggestion there. Yeah, so you can you can go into the Files app and zip it, or you can use a Siri shortcut to zip. So if you're not using iOS 13, if you're on an earlier iPhone or iPad, this is a good point that Jade, Jade makes here, is that you can actually zip it up uh, using iOS 12 and the Shortcuts app. So Compress is only available in iOS 13. If you're on iOS 12 or earlier, go to Shortcuts, set up a zip, and then you'll be able to zip up your file. Good to go. <laughs> and Sion says, yeah, glad I found the Moog. Uh, I'm glad too. <laughs> uh, th thanks for, uh, and David Hodges, thanks for the uh, the help. I uh, had advice from Sion, but I'm a newbie with GarageBand. And that's what it's all about. Like we, we were all newbies. Everyone started at zero, right? Um, what, what's, what's, I've got a bit of the, the desk in the corner there. Oh, that's my, <laughs> that's my uh, thing. That's all right. I was like, what is that bit of white thing? Oh, that's just my keyboard corner. Getting a wee bit distracted. Hello, Ricky Elvis. Good to have you on board here, my friend. I hope you're doing well at this time. Uh, question here from uh, Parker Kennel. How do you get more sounds in GarageBand? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's get some more sounds in our GarageBand. So, if you are new, new to GarageBand, the quickest and easiest way to get more sounds in your GarageBand world is to actually go to the sound browser and download the free sound packs that come with GarageBand. So if you go here, go into your sound library, tap on that one, and you got all of this business. So how many packs do we have these days? What have we got? 12, 16, 18 different sound packs. Now, some of them are just collections of tones, so basically plug-in settings that we have here, but some actually have whole instruments, have whole packs of loops, have whole bunches of alchemy synth presets. So there's a lot of ways to actually get some more sounds and use the sound library here in GarageBand to do that. The other way that you can go is to download and import any loop sample or anything from anywhere. And in fact, why don't we do that now? Because if you are interested, this might be a fun thing to do here. If you're interested in bringing a sound into your GarageBand project, let's sort of do this from scratch here now, shall we? So what we need to do is find a sound from somewhere. Now, there's a website that I use. If we come out here and we go to Safari. Oh, by the way, <laughs> how, how awkward. It's on my GarageBand iOS fact at studiolivetoday.com slash GarageBand. So this is where you can go if you want to learn about GarageBand. And in fact, let's see if we have a, an import, import audio. I should have it in here, H-I, importing. How to import an audio wave file into GarageBand. So there you go. We've got details there about how to import samples, how to import audio files, and it shows you what you can do there. But let's give you a complete demo here. So just while I go to the web page, I'll just pop on over here. All I'm going to do is click and go to, uh, what is it called? See, I've forgotten freesound.org just to log in there, just in case I need to put in my, my credentials and go to freesound.org to find something to throw into GarageBand. So we're here at freesound.org. Yes, I do need to log in. I haven't logged into this for a while. So I'm just gonna do my login thing. All I'm doing is putting my email address uh, and password, which I'm glad I didn't show on the screen because it's one of those passwords where it just shows your password just shows your password in plain text, which is never fun. We'll log in there. Oh, I've got it wrong. Oh, maybe I used a username. Oh, don't you hate this? Anyone else have this problem with passwords and usernames where they never quite remember what they used for everything? So all you need to do, if, you, if you've gone to free... No, it's not working at all. Hey, there we go. If you, if you go to freesound.org, you need to log in with your username and password or create a free account if you haven't. Let's, yeah, let's save our password for this website. That'd be a good idea because clearly Pete cannot be trusted to remember things. So I'm gonna make iOS remember it for me. So here we are, I'm on Safari. Important to be in Safari because we need to be able to download this sound. And we can do that here in um, in iOS 13. So let's search for a sound. Let's just say we wanted um, a loop and 120, just so that we can find a 120 BPM loop to bring into our project. Uh, a harmonica loop in C at 120. I like me some harmonica, so let's let's give this a sample. Uh, we'll tap on it there, tap on the sample. It'll load it up here. Now the important thing is to look at the licensing here because if you're gonna use this in a commercial release, you need to check the license and make sure that it is able to be used. If it's Creative Commons, it may actually only be able to be used it, with attribution. So you have to say, I use this loop from this person at this place, or it may actually only be for personal use. So check the licensing with any loops or samples you bring into any song. Uh, but that all being said, let's hit the play button. 
and hear this harmonica. That's um. Yeah, okay, I, I can see using that. We're going to go with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap on download. It is going to say, do you want to download a harmonica loop? We're going to tap download and it's going to open up <coughs> up the top here. <coughs> Excuse me. Up the top here, it's going to open up our download manager. You can see, there it is. It's downloading. It's a 2.1 megabyte file and it is downloaded. And that puts this in our downloads folder. So let's jump over to GarageBand now, shall we? Jump into GarageBand. Uh, let's open up a new project uh, because we don't want this one. We'll come in here. We'll go create new project. We will go. Let's just go into the keyboard because we just want to get back to the track view. So we'll tap on the track view up here in the top left corner. And now we can actually use the loop icon to bring in sounds. So if we tap on that one, here's all the other sounds and weird things that I've brought in over time. But what we can also do is browse items from the files app. We'll do that. It'll bring us in here. And then if we go back, back, back to locations, you'll notice that we have, where is it? You'll notice that we have something that we can't see. I'm looking for my downloads location. Why is it not showing? Why is it not showing my downloads location? <laughs> uh, maybe it doesn't actually give you access to it. Well, let's go to files and see what's going on here. So if we're here in files, there it is. It's under favorites. It's downloaded and it's downloaded that sample right there. Maybe we need to move it into our GarageBand file transfer folder. I thought we could import it from our downloads folder. Anyway, let's just do this anyway, because it's easier. If we go select, we tap on this one, and we tap move down the bottom here. We can now move it directly over into, on my iPad, there it is, into GarageBand, GarageBand file transfer, and hit copy. And there you go, it's going to push that over to that folder. And now when we go to GarageBand and we go to, on my iPad, in fact, we don't even need to do that. Let's just go out of this because what it'll do now, cancel, cancel, is it'll actually bring that right into this Loops browser because this is the default location. GarageBand file transfer is the default location for our files. So if we tap it, it'll play. I'm paranoid now that you can't hear the, the samples. So please let me know that you can actually hear what I'm playing through GarageBand. Otherwise, uh, we're in trouble. <laughs> so what we now need to do is tap and hold and drag this over onto our project and release it. But here's the problem. You'll see it hasn't lined up properly, right? Because we need to set our project to the same BPM. So to do that, we come up here to the settings. And instead of 110, we tap that and we pump it on up to 120. And what should happen now is boom, it should be right there and ready to go. Now, if we wanted to loop this, we can loop it like that, and then we're good to go. And now if we wanted to bring in more samples, we can go back to freesound.org and find some 120 BPM drum loops, or we can just start layering stuff up here. So we know this is in C major. So if we came in here and we wanted to add some, say, bass guitar to this, we'll tap on our bass, and we can play along here if we hit this. and so on and so forth. So we can layer that up. Let's just, just for fun, let's just add some drums. And here's the beauty part. Now that we're, we're here, we can use Apple Loops. So if we come to the Apple Loops section, any of our drums will just line up with that particular rhythm. So they're all at 120 BPM now because these can actually time stretch. This is the thing. We said before, you can't time stretch your own samples, but all of the Apple loops will actually time stretch. So if we just grabbed, say, just something random, African King Ensemble, I have no idea what this is, but we'll just put it in there and we play this along. That's completely changed that song, hasn't it? And hopefully because I've used a very basic harmonica loop there, it's not going to have problems with copyright and things because that's the other thing to remember. If you use a loop that has been used in someone else's track and you do things like, oh, I don't know, put it on YouTube, then it can cause problems like that. So uh, yes, keep that in mind. But that is how we get more sounds in GarageBand. I hope that helped you, uh, Parker. And if anyone else has any other questions about that or wants to know more, let me know. I'll just make sure that we that the sound is coming through. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Uh, let's come back up and see if we've got some more questions. 
Uh, so Peter, maybe this is a follow-up question here. Parker, sorry. So when you download drum kits or sounds from websites and download it to files, then move to GarageBand, how do you fix it? Something says the quality is too high and won't work. Good question. So it's a, a good point to make here at the moment is that the other part of this is that 32-bit samples don't work. So if you get a 32-bit sample that you download, you're going to have to downsample it to 24-bit because 24-bit is the maximum that GarageBand supports. So if you get a 32-bit sample, either convert it if you're using a PC or a Mac using some software or Audio Share works for most as well. So the Audio Share app, I'll just show you this again real quick. This is a good part of having this all set up here so that we can show different things. So if we came in here to Audio Share, which is always right here in my dock because I use it all the time, and say we wanted to, say we had a sample here. In fact, let's just find that sample, shall we? We'll bring that sample in from Document Picker. We know that we can go to my browse. And do we actually get access to the right location in this one? See, here we can get downloads. Don't know why we couldn't get in the other spot. So if we downloaded this sample in here, here it is. We've got it. What we can actually do is use our conversion tool. So up in the top right, we can use tools and convert. And here you go. We can actually change this and this will convert it into a format that's going to work. So if we wanted this to be still a WAV file, boom, like that. And here you can see bit depth, right? So if this was a 32-bit WAV file, if we wanted to convert it, we just change it to 24-bit and then hit the save button. It's going to save a new version of that and it's going to be the same exact WAV file, but it's just downsampled it to 24-bit. So if you're finding you're bringing in WAV files and it's saying that, Use Audio Share. It's about a three dollar app, but it's like it's the Swiss Army knife of audio apps. It does all sorts of things. It's got a Wi-Fi share option there that you can actually share your files via Wi-Fi. You can copy and paste between apps with ease. It's even got a high quality audio recorder there, like lit, really high quality. So you've got settings here. You can set this to like 24 bit, 44. Um, it can do automatic normalization. You've got effects chains here that you can actually literally add in effects, like audio unit effects to your audio recordings. So if you're doing a podcast or something like that, it can be a great way to record, doing field recordings with your iPhone. Anyway, this isn't an ad for audio share they don't sponsor the show uh, and i don't get any kickback if you download it but like seriously three three or four dollars i'm sure it's that cheap and it does all that and more it's a very cool app so hopefully that helped you out all righty uh we'll see if we've got any other questions i saw one from Tac 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 Taco Boy, uh, Taco Boy, yeah, maybe. Uh, Pete, I've got a question. Recently, I've been exporting my songs as you've taught us, but sometimes an alert appears like an audio unit is not working. Blah blah blah. How do I fix that? Stay safe. This is a good question, and uh, let, let's show a bit of a workaround for that because audio unit plugins, when you're exporting, can be a little bit of a hassle. <clears throat> so let's go back to GarageBand. Uh, did I did I make a note of that last one? Uh, I didn't. Who asked that last question about the importing files? Uh, download and import files. That was the, my man Parker, wasn't it? Parker Kennel. When, when I when I go back and like edit this because <laughs> we, people people watch the replay, they'll be like, "That was a slick stream, Pete." And I'm like, "Yes, nothing at all went wrong, as far as you know." Uh, yeah, let, let, let's show this here. So I'm just going to, I'll drop your question off the screen there, but we're looking at audio unit plugins and the effects that they can have when we're, re, when we're removing something. So why don't I come in here? Where's, where's that one we were working on before? This one here, only because it's a nice small file here. So let's just say that on this weird lead vocal that I put here, let's just throw a plugin on. So if you're using a plugin, and this works well too if you're sharing with someone else who doesn't have that particular plugin. So let's say that on this one I used an audio unit extension and I wanted to use the door cassette from Clev Grand because it's a cool like cassette emulation thing. We're gonna play around with this, we'll get the the motor quality sounding bad, and then if we let's just solo this vocal that I did before. <laughs> Yes, sounding even worse than the bad recording sounding it had before. Um, so yeah, if we had that on there and say we were sharing this with someone who didn't have that or when we were exporting, it was saying, door cassette has caused this project to crash and the whole world's going to come to an end. Well, no, it's not. It's all good. All you need to do is tap on this one and then uh, we need to merge. So we use the merge function because what merge does is it actually writes this. The problem is when you're exporting a track, uh, a project that's got a lot of plugins, it's having to 
process all of those plugins as well as render out all the tracks at the same time. And if it's a complex project and perhaps your iPad doesn't have quite the horsepower or the storage or the processing or the RAM to cope, it just falls in a bundle and stops. So what do you do to work around it? Well, all we do is merge this track. So the, the track with the plugin that's causing you the problem, merge it out like this. So just select the track, hit the merge button in the top right corner here, and that will duplicate the song and will create a new version with that particular vocal and that particular part merged down into a standard audio track. So now, instead of it having to process that plugin, this is doing the processing. The merging is processing that track. Now it's got that all merged together there. And if we go in here to the plugins and EQ, there's nothing on it. So that is the workaround for this that's worked for me in the past. If you're having an error, if something's saying this plugin is not working because uh, and it can't export your track, do this, create a duplicate copy of it. It'll create a duplicate of your project and then export that project as a WAV file and it should work. And again, it's, a, it's also a good way if I was sharing this with someone and they didn't have that plugin, it's another way that I can make sure that they can have access to that as well. So hopefully, uh, Taco Boy, that gives you a way to actually work around this and something that you can actually do with it. Hopefully. Alrighty. Uh, update. Sion solved it. Thanks. What was the solve? Um, so glad I could help. So this is, um, I need to remove the live loops icon. Oh. So I need to remove the live loops icon. Okay. Uh, how, how did you get that done? Um, let me let me know. Uh, yeah, let me know what uh, what you actually did and how that worked out. So this was Dave who had the issue earlier in the show uh, where you had the problem with the muting and the soloing. So it sounded like maybe you had something in the live loops grid that was actually causing problems. So if you didn't know, you can actually use live loops. So if we come here and we go to our instrument selector, you can use a combination of live loops and the, the track view. So if I came here into live loops and started playing around with this, it'll take a little while. Because I'm really pushing. This is my first gen iPad Pro. I'm kind of pushing it to the limit. So, so if we recorded this, we recorded like a live loop bit. One, two. You can kind of do a hybrid combination thing, and then you can come back into your track view, and there you go. It records your live loops there as a separate track view track. So maybe is, is what what you were saying that something was happening out here that was different, like maybe something out here was soloed or or um, or muted. That that's, that's an interesting one, if that's the case, because that could trip some people up. Let's just say you start in the live loops view, but then you go to the, the grid, uh, then you go back to the track view. Yeah, that could cause problems. So maybe that is the tip. If that's not it, let me know too. But that's another tip, because actually, let's just try this. Let's just do a quick sample here. If I say solo just this weird snare over here that I'm not even using, and then came back and tried to play back over here. Yeah, okay. Is that it? Because I've never seen that before. I've never, I've probably never done that where I've got something over here on the grid, the live loops grid soloed, but yeah, something over here. And there you go. Yep, okay, That that's it. So Sion, if you did solve that, you're a genius. Dave, I hope that fixed it and you're back on track. Anyway, uh, let's continue on here and see what other questions we have. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, back. Oh, you had your movie movie trailer premiere. Did I miss that, Jade? Uh, movie trailer premiere was happening. Oh, yeah. I, I'm doing so much live streaming that I'm not really coordinating things very well, am I? Um, yeah. But I have let you know, Jade, of my timing for tomorrow. So hopefully my show and your show will not conflict tomorrow. And I will catch up on the replay. And I suggest everyone catch up on the replay of the premiere of Jade's trailer. In fact, Jade, send me send me the link and I'll make sure it goes in the description of this one so folks can get over there and check it out. So, uh, so it sounds like it was because Dave said I messed around in the loops, uh, live loops, but wasn't using them. But yeah, <laughs> I fear them. I fear them too. I don't use them a lot. Uh, let's see if we've got any other questions. Oh, I've skipped over a bunch of people saying a bunch of things. Da, 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 da. Uh, can you play, 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 uh, so I've got a question here from Giovanni Martinez. Hello to you. I don't think I've seen you before as well. Hello, Mr. Pete. I uh, hope you're doing well, super well. Can you please, please, please explain how to master the sound levels of the instruments each to uh, level, can, level of balance? So uh, yeah, what I'll probably do with this one is suggest that you head over to my uh, FAQ because I've got a bunch of mastering videos. In fact, let's just see. I need to 
I'll unshare my, I'll stop mirroring my iPad for a moment so that we can bring up, bring up my web page over here. And so that I'm not lying to you, let's just see what we have over here. Now, this is at GarageBand. No, it's not. It's at studiolivetoday.com slash GarageBand. And if we scroll on down, what you'll notice here is we've got mixing. So there's a whole playlist of videos here. If you go to the mixing playlist here. So again, we're at studiolivetoday.com slash GarageBand. Under mixing, this playlist has a heap of different mixing tutorials. So you could probably spend a day, if we open this one up, in another tab here. This is going to open it up in YouTube. And there you go. So it starts with my basics of mixing, which is a 20 minute video that gives you kind of everything you need to know about mixing. If you've never mixed anything before, I'd start with that one. And then we've got mixing rap, vocal automation, uh, mixing a creepy song, complete song, remixing a song, mixing guitars. Um, yeah. So the heap there that you can check out, I recommend doing that. If you then want to get onto the mastering side of things, if we come back over here, we've got the same thing. So there's two mastering videos there. One mastering in GarageBand, which is um, a quick and cheap and free way to master your songs. And then we've got mastering in Final Touch, which is another way to actually master a different app. It's about a $20 app, but it's very, very cool. And it's a great way to master. So they're right there next to each other. And if you've, uh, if you've noticed the problem here too, this is supposed to be in alphabetical order. Mixing, mastering. <laughs> Does anyone see a problem? No. Uh, it's all fine, Pete. But yeah, so if you head over to studiolivetoday.com slash garageband to my GarageBand FAQ, you can find that and a whole bunch more. I hope that helps you out. And thank you for being here, Giovanni. Uh, I'm going to add, add you to my notes here. Giovanni Martinez. And let me know where you're, where you're dialing in from. I don't think I've seen your name before. So uh, thank you for joining us here live on Studio Live today. So that was mixing, mixing levels and mastering. And sorry, I'm not going to do a demo of that one. It is, it is a sort of more involved process. Um, but yes, I've done other mixing. In fact, I've done a mixing. The, the, the song I keep trying to play to you and then failing, which is Steve's new song. Um, I did a whole mixing series of his previous or two songs ago. He did a song um, which I did the mixing of and I actually demoed that here on the channel. Um, so yeah, you can check that series out too. I'm pretty sure that's in that mixing playlist that I showed you just before. Uh, can I send you my project for demonstration? Um, yeah, I probably don't have time. Oh, how are we going for time? Uh, you can. It, tell you what, if you send it, if you zip it up using the process I showed before, if you zip up the project and if you email it to me, pete at studiolivetoday.com, and you can do that within the next sort of 30 minutes, uh, I'll see what I can do. Like, so, remind me, remind me towards the end, send me an email, and if you can get that done, we'll, we'll jump in and have a look. We'll have a look at your track and your project. Uh, duh, 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 duh. let's just see if we've got any other DGI games. Hello to you. Uh, I record in GarageBand with my interface, but for some reason I always have to merge the audio to actually be able to see the wave and hear the audio. Am I doing something wrong? You're probably not doing anything wrong. As I adjust my headphones, you're probably not doing anything wrong. You are probably just recording at a low level. So the, the and I've, I've got videos about this as well. Uh, let's just see if I've got one here that I can find. What we're looking at here is uh, basically input game. I don't think I have, oh, I don't have it on here. So because it's not GarageBand specific, it's probably not on my GarageBand FAQ, but let's, let's find the video together. Uh, DGI games, uh, we've got uh, low recording volume. In case you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just making notes of these because I have the problem is at the end, I've forgotten what I've talked about and you guys have such good questions. I want to make sure I can come back to them at a later stage. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, let, let's, uh, let's jump over to the screen and see because I don't think I have it linked in here, but if we go to the YouTube and yes, this is how I find things for myself. I search my name and then I search for the things. So I think I have one on input gain, which is about setting a microphone input gain. So, the, the, and we've got another one here for how to adjust the, the volume and gain in GarageBand. So the reason that you would have to merge it is primarily that it's too low. So the signal coming through is too low. And again, you, you won't be able to see it, especially for things like guitar and bass, but even for vocals, 
often it's caused by using a dynamic mic. So I'm not sure what mic you're using to record, but if you're using a dynamic mic, so not a condenser mic that's powered, but a dynamic mic, that can give you a low signal. And if the preamp on your interface doesn't have enough gain or you find you have to turn it up too loud to actually be heard, that's another problem as well. So the, the microphones that I use and recommend that have good gain and then the interfaces. So the reason I use the Steinberg UR series is that they have very nice quiet preamps. You can turn the gain up without getting a whole bunch of noise into the signal and if you pair it with something like um, an audio technica condenser mic this is the ae 3300 i only have it because i bought it second hand it's actually about a 500 hundred dollar microphone i bought it for about 150 second hand a long long time ago um, but yeah the at 2020 from audio technica hundred dollar microphone super stable gives you really good gain levels as long as you pair it with an interface that has that so that's the way to do it uh, if you want to to find out how to set the microphone volume and your input gain into GarageBand, check out that video there called how to set microphone volume and as you see all i did was search pete john's input gain and it popped it straight up there so uh hopefully that uh, that helps out <clears throat> excuse me um let's see if we have any other questions parker kennel says thank you you've helped me so much I, well, i'm very glad um I, I, that's that's the whole point of this i thought at this point in time, more than any other time, uh, if I can spend two hours and if I can just get a handful of people creating more music or getting you back on track or giving you some of the tools and tips and ideas that is going to get more music in the world created, that can only be a good thing, yeah? So that's what we're trying to do here. And if other people that maybe didn't even think about these sort of questions, that might just go into their bank of things that, hey, oh, I didn't really think about doing that, but maybe on my next project... I'll try doing that. Or they come across that problem in the future. This is why I love watching Q&A shows, is that it's not necessarily that I have all these questions, but that I'll see something and I'll be like, ah, okay, I didn't even know that. And then three months later, I come across that problem. And I'm like, that's right. I was watching that Q&A show. And the dude said, you need to do this. So there you go. Uh, let's go. Let's see what other questions we have. Uh, how to master a beat. Uh, yeah, so we, we've covered that. Yeah, check out the mastering uh, mastering videos I have over on the channel. Plenty of videos to keep you busy. I, I realized that we ticked over a thousand videos. We're at 1,018 on Studio Live today, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, the channel's only been going since 2016, and we have over a thousand videos. But I have been doing a video a day for uh, about 15 months now. So yeah, you can do the sums on that one. 500 videos in about that time. Uh, let us go and see what else we have. Uh, we've got some tips here from Sion. Goal is to pay attention to the volume of the main audio or instrument, usually the lead vocal, and try to reduce the volume so it doesn't overwhelm that sound. That is an excellent mixing tip in general. Here's what too many folks do, including myself. When I say folks, I mean me, is that when you come to mix, if you, if, especially if you start with the drums and the bass and the guitars, and then you try and add your vocal, your main instrument is your vocal, you want to do it the other way around. You want to work out what that level is going to be. And very few people mix too quietly. A whole heap of people mix too loud. As, anytime I hear someone's mix and they're like, ah, it's just not sounding right. Can you take a listen? I look at it and everything's up too loud, which means your master bus, like the overall volume, is going to be clipping or close to clipping and sounding crunchy and grungy. Your auto limiting is going to kick in. It's going to make it wave in and out. So all you need to do is just take all of your faders and put them down like half, literally. Put them down 50%. And then as uh, Sion's saying here, bring up your main instrument. If your main instrument is your beat, if your main instrument is your kick drum or your, or your snare or your, your bass, then that's cool. If it's your vocals or if it's your rap that you're putting over the top, put that up to the level where it's going to be where you want it to be and then pull everything else up. It's a great technique, a good thing to try. There is no right and wrong way to do any stuff when it comes to music. I'm never going to say, do this and don't do that. Uh, but yeah, it's just about trial and error. What's going to work for you? What works for your workflow? So excellent, uh, excellent tips there. Uh, let's go. Uh, do you pay for it? Uh, I'm not sure which one this. So Giovanni's asking, do you pay for it? Uh, Garage Bands, uh, oh, hang on. <laughs> this was to do... Oh. That was another conversation between uh, Sion and Giovanni. So we'll, we'll leave that one there. We'll scroll on down. I think I'm nearly caught up to all of the questions. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I think we're, we're right down there. Um, David says, thanks, Pete. So much easier to understand when it's shown rather than being told. Yeah, so hopefully doing the demos and the, the, the actual showing on the screen of some of these things 
is going to help out. So if this, if this is useful, I haven't said this yet. Um, I said at the very start, this is brought to you by Studio Live today. And then I didn't do any promotion for the rest of the show. Uh, but yes, this is brought to you by me and Studio Live today. Uh, so if you do want to support the channel, there are a few ways you can do it. You can hit like on this one. That just means that you, despite a few of the teething problems we had with the stream, that the audio cut out like twice, at least that I know of then uh, yeah, you're getting some value out of it. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. That will mean you get updated every day with every new live video that we have. And you can go over to studiolivetoday.com, check out the email mailing list, my gear guide, and the ways that you can support the channel through Patreon or through donations through PayPal or through a super chat here on the live shows. There's a heap of different ways you can do it. I appreciate all of them. Bubba says question, scroll up a little. Okay, I've clearly missed a question from Bubba. I'm going to scroll up and find it. Yay! And I'm, So, from earlier you missed. Uh, have you found any problems, advantages, or Easter eggs since the drop of 13.4? Excellent question. I'm glad you had to ask it three times for me to actually find it there. <laughs> but we are there in the end. Um, what have I found? So... Let's bring let's let's display my screen again and we'll do a little quick retrospective on iOS 13.4. So I'm going to share this. Again, I'm using Reflector 3 to share to my screen. Oh, it's it's popped up its thing in behind. 1809. In case anyone else wants to also connect to my Reflector 3. <laughs> I don't think it works that way, but uh, yeah, we can try it. All right. That's up there somewhere. We should be able to find it. There it is. We'll scroll this over. We'll put this over on the other side. I am using AirPlay, but I'll... Whoa! Don't ever do that. Don't ever unplug and plug back in with your volume up or you're going to hurt and surprise your live viewers. All right, we're back up. <coughs> so what have I found with iOS 13.4 uh, that's been good, bad, ugly, otherwise? Um, so the number one thing that I find a bit weird is that it's really good to have this new mouse pointer and it's really good that I've got things like right click in some of the other apps. So you can actually use the, the right click to like copy and paste some things in some of the Apple apps. But what it does mean is that what I used to have is the three buttons on your mouse, you used to be able to assign to different things. So I used to make the middle button to go to my app switcher. I used to make the right button go back to my home screen and the left button would just do tapping. So now I can't seem to do that. If anyone's worried that out, I've got, I've got to do some more research this weekend. I've got a complete video about the mouse in iOS 13.4 that I'll be covering soon. But that's sort of the number one thing. I do like the new cursor. It's taking some getting used to it where it does its little wraparound thing. Uh, let's just go back to the main screen where it does its little wraparound thing like this. That's taking a little bit of getting used to because you kind of get close to something and it just suctions it over there. And it's okay if you've got it like this, like a big red one, but if you're using the default one, it doesn't sort of stand out as much. So luckily I like things larger and redder, so I can actually see it. And when I'm doing tutorials, it's actually gonna be pretty cool because it makes it easier for you to see, I think, exactly what I'm pointing at. When I say, all right, go down to the bottom, click on the recent button, except that's a bad example because it's behind the comment. If I say go to the top and click on GarageBand for iOS and then come up to the top right and tap on select, that's going to make it easier for folks to do that. Uh, here's the good news. I haven't found any third-party apps, any plugins, any audio units that are failing or doing anything bad uh, because of iOS 13.4. Uh, hasn't been any major bugs that I've experienced. Looking at all the different communities that I've involved with, uh, no one has mentioned anything about apps failing or anything going bad. So I don't think there's any reason. Like with some of the upgrades, um, people, the advice is to wait a while and then come back to it. Uh, and wait a couple of weeks, make sure that there's no major flaws before you actually update. I don't think that's the case with iOS 13.4. The one thing that I'm finding cool that I want to experiment with, that I'm going to experiment during the week, next week, is the iCloud Drive sharing. So I'm going to try this by putting a couple of GarageBand projects in a folder on my iCloud Drive. So we'll just show you this. So here is my GarageBand for iOS. Here's my iCloud Drive. You can see I've got you know, my client folder. I've got ideas in progress, completed, background music, a bunch of other things. So what I want to do is put in here just like a Studio Live Today folder perhaps and make that a shared folder. In fact, let's, let's set it up now because this is the other cool feature of iOS 13.4, the other game changer one for folks using, um, using I, iOS for music recording is that we can come here. What, what am I doing? I was creating a new song in GarageBand. I forgot that I'm in GarageBand. This is the problem I have. 
Who, who else gets caught by this? Where you think you're in files, but you're actually in GarageBand. Then you go to do some file transfers and it doesn't work. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, so again, iCloud Drive, iCloud Drive, GarageBand for iOS. And this is actually why I have my files in this format, in the, the these sort of list views, is because it means that what I'm trying to do is train my brain that if it looks like this, if it looks like folders, then you're in GarageBand, idiot. And if it looks like this, then you're actually in the files app. Um, hasn't worked clearly because I still keep forgetting. Uh, anyway, so what I could do here is we could create a new folder. So if we go to the very top here, oh, by the way, if you don't know that, um, if you're wondering where all this stuff at the top here, so see how there's nothing there? Like to change your view and stuff and to add a folder, you just need to drag down on the screen. So drag down and you get this array, which is where you can change things, you can change your sorting, and you can add your folders. So if I added the folder here and I called it 11, whoop, I'm wrong keyboard, Got two keyboards here, need the, the iPad keyboard. I do 11, and we called this one Studio Live Today, and we saved it there. Then technically, what I should be able to do is go into this folder, and I've got to remember how to do this with the, uh, the sharing options. If I select, and I tap on that one there, and I tap Share down in the bottom left, we can now actually share this. We can add people like this. So we can add people to our folder to share it with them taken a little, little wee bit of a while but yeah so we've got the sharing options here I, I, I just need to work out is there a way to just copy the link that seems to be the one thing that I can't work out with this um, oh, but yeah it doesn't seem to actually got my name email address all that sort of stuff I can change the share option here so if I just went if I went anywhere with the link and we made it view only and we went to add people well then yeah obviously I can use any of these methods oh there it is copy link all right so if I copy that link uploading. So I'm assuming that that link is now copied to my clipboard. So here's what I want to test during the week is if I put some things at the moment, there's nothing in there. But if I put some things in there, you can see there, it's got the little little icon there saying it's shared. But if I put a project file in there, does that mean everyone, say I've got a zip file, anyone with that link can just jump in and do that. And does that mean that if I put a GarageBand project file in there, because it's on Apple's infrastructure, that should allow anyone to come in and collaborate on it. How interesting would it be if I put a project in there and just made it a public Studio Live Today project? How many versions would we get? How quickly would my iCloud drive fill up with like 14,000 different versions of that? Maybe not a good idea, but I definitely want to experiment around with that during the week because I think that's a cool feature. Apart from that, Bubba, I haven't come across anything that I dislike or particularly like. I don't think it's a massive game changer update, but I love the new mouse cursor. I'm still getting used to it, what we said before. I love that new sharing feature. There's really nothing else new for music and for video and for, for content creators, but that's that's enough. That's That's pretty good. Uh, let me know what you think. Has anyone else got any uh, any other thoughts on the new version of iOS? <clears throat> uh, Jay says, my new forthcoming full-featured animated movie made on iOS. The answer is 42. Uh, link for me is there. Excellent. So please jump over and check that one out when you get a chance. Mr. Rick Lisk, thank you for being here. And uh, I, I echo Ricky Elvis here who says, uh, yeah, you, you cool for the odd dumb question? Uh, yeah, so please, there is no such thing as, as like all questions are relevant. Sion knows a bunch of stuff. Jade here on the stream knows a bunch of stuff. If you've got questions that I don't get to, put them in the chat here. Put them in the comments if they don't get answered in the chat. Because not only me, I often come back and, and read the comments. And by the time I get to the comments, someone else has actually already answered them. So that is what's cool about this community is that everyone is helping everyone else as much as possible. And that's what we're all here for, right? We all want to create music. We all want to just do our thing. So that's it. Uh, let's have a look here. So Giovanni said, uh, Giovanni said he will, he will email it. So let's see. I'll, I'll check that in just a moment because we are, we're 20 minutes from the end of the show. So I'll check that out and see if Giovanni said his track. And if, if with your permission, uh, we'll have a look at it here. Uh, on the on there, uh, righty gokey. Uh, yeah, so I've answered Bubba's question that I had to scroll up for, uh, and and Jay, again, Jay does a better job promoting me than I do, uh, which is that you can also get some merchandise. You can get the Studio Live Today t-shirts, mugs, and hoodies at studiolivetoday.com slash merch. And uh, again, anything that you do along those lines supports the channel, and that is also cool. And you can listen to my music. So if you search Pete Johns on in, on your Googles, your YouTubes, your Spotify's, your Apple Music, your iTunes, your, I don't know, Deezer, uh, I don't know, some any of those weird ones, 
it, using DistroKid, it goes everywhere, which is cool. Barry Smith, always good to see your name, my friend. When are we going to get an update for GarageBand for iOS 13? What a good question. Uh, we don't know, and I don't know. Um, yeah, are we overdue? Probably. Uh, are we going to see one soon? I don't know. So I'm, on, I'm in two minds about this, if I'm going to speculate. One is that Apple have got uh, the new iPhone 9 or the SE2 or the iPhone that is rumoured to be, it was rumoured to be coming out in March. It's probably now going to be more like June or later. So maybe there'll be something to line up with that. Maybe an update to like their iMovie and GarageBand and other suite to make that a, a, an appealing proposition because it all comes as default. I think that, I don't think we're going to see another update in iOS 13 land. I think it's probably going to be iOS 14 that we're going to see an update because of some new functionality, like we did with the original iOS 13, where we got dark mode, we got the new share sheet, which still doesn't work. Uh, then I think iOS 14 is when we're going to see an update. So I wouldn't be holding your breath for a GarageBand update anytime in the next three months, especially with everything else happening at the moment. I would be thinking later in the year around the launch of iOS 14, if I was a betting man and I'm not really, but uh, yeah, that's my view on that one, Barry. Uh, I'll, I'll add you to my list of questions here because I think, I think I've forgotten the last couple of questions. Uh, yes, that's right. It was Bubba and it was iOS 13.4 and Barry Smith. And you were asking about, uh, oh, it's not, it's not alt tabbing. Uh, yes, iOS, iOS, uh, GarageBand update, which I don't know, but if anyone has any inside scoop, anyone knows anyone at Apple that they can uh, hit up and find out, let me know. Uh, hello. Oh, thank you. Uh, no, thank you, sir. And sorry that I missed your question twice. <laughs> Zanauer, hello to you. Have not seen you around the channel before, so thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it. And the one and only DJ Southpaw, uh, who is one of my patrons over on Patreon, which I really appreciate big time. Thank you, my friend. Uh, hope all, hope everyone is well. Uh, yes, uh, likewise. Uh, Jerry, Jerry Gomes, uh, I think you have a question here. Is there a way to adjust the volume of each drum separately using the auto drummer? using an iPad is the follow-up on that one. Uh, yes, so it is. Um, the drummer is the hard part, though. So using the drummer is not quite so easy. If you're using drums, and Jade Star is actually a really good one on this, you can separate out those drums. It's a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a time-consuming process, but the problem is, and I, have, I haven't found a good way to do this actually with the auto drummer. So if you're talking about, as opposed to drums, if you're talking about our actual drummer here, this one here, uh, when you go in here, you'll know that if you've got a drum track, it just looks like this. So there's no separation of those drums, and I don't believe there is actually a way to actually separate them out, apart from what some people do, is they do something like this. So let's say we've got Darcy here. Let's just duplicate her a couple of times. Now, do I have the screen up? Yes. <laughs> Check that I've actually got the screen up this time. Uh, oh, so we can't duplicate. Oh, that's right. You can only have two versions of Darcy, can't you? So there's a couple of things that we can do here. We could come into the original Darcy and say we wanted to put the uh, just the kick drum. We can turn off everything else. So we want to just sort of the kick drum on one channel. Then we could have Darcy's kick. Let's just make it a bit more louder and complex. And then we can uh, copy that, come back to the start, paste it in again. And now we've got two kicks. But now if we wanted to just sort of have the, the snare and the hats on a separate track, well, yeah, we can get two. And then we can adjust that. So you can really only adjust the two different things. But what a lot of folks do and I've done this before on a track, is I use the drums. So I set up a drum kit. If we come out of drummer and we go to just the drums, boom. Uh, not in the, It always does this to me. It always goes into the beat sequencer. Uh, more sounds. We don't want that. Let's just go into a regular acoustic kit. All right. So say we wanted to set this up and wanted to record in a kick drum. We'll just solo it to record in a kick drum like this. Two, three, four... And put that one there. Why is it not stopping? <laughs> it didn't want to stop. It wanted to keep going, man. And then, yeah, you can obviously duplicate that out there and then like add in each different part of your drums. So then we wanted to add in some hats.
I was trying to tap on different parts, but I don't think. Oh, yeah, I gotta get, gotta get it right up there with the mouse. Okay, just gotta learn my zones a bit better. So then, obviously, you can adjust those. But what I've done, and other people have done in the past that can work well with this, is to use those. So to use your drums, and then to get some fills, actually only have your drummer like playing during the fills. This can be like a kind of funky way to get things going on here. So let's just say that we had those there and then we wanted to add some fills here at the end of the bar. We can bring it on back uh, and put like Darcy there and there. And then it's just going to like come in here and it'll be like. See what I mean? So that's the, the way that I've used in the past is to use your use your drums to create your basic sort of pattern and then use your drummer as your fills only because I don't know about you, but I can program basic drums. I find it hard to get like the ghost notes and the feel and the timing for some of those fills. So that's the way that I could do that. And then of course you can adjust your kick, your snare, all of your different drums there. I know Jade's going to have some more advice and some other things to say that will help out. Um, we all need to encourage Jade to do a, a drum separation uh, tutorial <laughs> or teach me how to do it better and then I can do one in the future. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that helped you out. And thank you for being here, Jerry. Once again, I have not seen your name around the channel before. So I uh, hope you're getting some value here. And uh, yeah, but, uh, if you do, you're not already subscribed like everyone else do so. See, I'm getting better at the self-promotion. Uh, I'm not, not having to get Jay to do all of my promotion for me. Uh, let's see if we have any more questions. Oh, we have from, from Sion. Uh, for the mouse control for the middle button, go to settings, accessibility, and select devices. You can customize the mouse from there. Uh, see, I th yeah, I, I thought I did that, but I, I'm getting confused with it. That's the thing. Um, I, won't, I won't go into it now because we've got a couple more things to do. And we've got about 10 minutes to go. Um... Uh, I think Jade tipped us off that there's a GB update in the works. Maybe there is. Uh, maybe there'll be a minor update. So Jade says, minor update soonish. Got the inside scoop there uh, that something might be happening. That would be cool. I like it. Uh, do, 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 do. So Giovanni, uh, I'm using iOS 12. My account is blocked to purchase workflow. So I can't find a possible way to send the project. Ah, so if you can't get workflow or shortcuts and you can't zip up the project, maybe try this new iCloud, or just try the iCloud um, sharing and see if you can do that. Um, if you've got a Mac or a PC, then you can go into the iCloud and then zip up the .bam project on your Mac or PC. So there are other ways to do that. Uh, cool, cool. Barry says, thank you, Pete. Take care. I will certainly do that. Um, a question here, music arrangement for melody writing. Is the, is it the GarageBand on the iPad? Yes. So I'm using GarageBand on the iPad for this demonstration. And a good question here, which I will put in my notes here, which is, can we move the project to Mac for further editing? Uh, yes, we certainly can. I'm just going to make a note here for melody writing. Uh, so iPad to Mac. So let's give you the lowdown scoop on what you can do with an iPad to a Mac. So yes, you can export. So in all the ways that we've shown this before, you can export your project. So if I've got this, <laughs> this great new project that I've created here, good old my song too, we can select it, we can share it using the sharing options we've talked about earlier in the show. So we can zip it up and send it to someone else. You can then open it, download it, open it on a Mac, or we can use the people sharing option and share it with someone else on iCloud Drive using a direct integration here, which is the other way to do it. Here's the thing though, once you open it in GarageBand for Mac and make any changes, it doesn't work the other way. So you can export your projects from iOS, open them in Mac, edit them, do your thing, but then you can't send that back. If you wanted to reopen it in GarageBand on iOS, you need to export each individual track as a WAV file, as a stem, and then import those stems back into your iPad GarageBand. So works one way, doesn't work the other. So apologize for that. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, it is cool. If you do want to do some finishing, I know a lot of folks, you start their ideas even on their iPhone. They'll be out and about. They'll start a, a project idea, get a lot of the stuff down, and then send it on across to their 
their Mac to do their mixing and mastering if that's if that's the platform you prefer to do it on. So good question. Thank you for being here. Uh, and Jerry says, yes, uh, I am a subscriber and have learned a lot from you. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. Um, yes, and uh, I appreciate everyone here, uh, everyone who takes the time out. Like I say, I'm trying my best to be positive at the moment and give back as much as possible because creating music, music is important at the best of times and it's probably as if not more important in the challenging times. So for anyone uh, that that is struggling or that is being challenged out there, I do feel for you. I genuinely do. Um, I just don't think that the, the, the right thing to do is to do nothing or to stop trying to, to help and create music and help people create. So hopefully uh, this is helping folks out. Uh, let us continue on here. When Barry says, when am I going to use Cubasis 3? I know, I'm way overdue. It, it, so much stuff keeps happening. iOS 13.4, new iPad. Like Even doing a video a day, I'm about, I've, all those free uh, Nembrini plugins, I haven't tried a bunch of the new free ones um, and I'm running out of time. They're only free for another few weeks. So, yeah. And as Jade points out here, uh, Aure Aurea Pro is on, uh, on sale at the moment and Cubasis 2 is also a lot cheaper than uh, than Cubasis 3. So they're things that you can try out as well. Um, and yes, as we just discussed, Mac to iPads, no, unfortunately, not possible to do that way. Uh, let me jump across and I'll see if I do have this email from our friend, uh, I think it was Giovanni, who said they sent an email. I'm just going to jump into my email. Don't mind me while I do this. I'm off the screen here because in case I show something that uh, folks don't want to be shown showed shown uh then we can take a look at this so we'll see if we have this project file i don't seem to see that it's here so maybe it hasn't come through yet we may not be able to do that but definitely send it through to me and uh yeah and i'll take a look at that and the same goes for anyone I, I am always a little behind, to be very honest, on my email. So uh, if you don't get a response straight away, the same goes, here's the problem. I've kind of backed myself into this corner where I'm on. Uh, Facebook, I've got two Facebook pages. I've got Pete John's Music and Studio Live today. I oh, know this is going to be like, get the violins out. Poor you, Pete. You're too popular. But I've got two Facebook pages. I've got Instagram, Twitter, email, and all my YouTube comments. So there's actually six places where I get messages. So when I sit down to answer messages and to respond to people it can sometimes take me a while and so if I don't get to every platform every day don't freak out and think that I don't love you because I haven't responded sometimes it can take you know sometimes it'll be two hours sometimes it can be up to like a week or two weeks but I will get back to you eventually and if I don't just give me a knock knock and say uh yeah you know I'm not being rude Pete but I emailed you a week ago and you haven't you haven't responded to me buddy and I'll definitely try and get back to you um let's see uh, do we have another question do you know well there's a good question and this comes up a lot uh do you know any good DAW software for Android so we have had this asked before I'm just going to make a note of this again DAW for Android um no is the answer. So people in the past have suggested uh, BandLab, I believe, have a version on Android. And I don't know if FL Studio does. There's another one that someone will throw in the in the chat, I'm sure, or in the comments. Uh, here we go. Uh, Sion, coming to the rescue again. Sion, you need to be my right-hand man. If you want to be on a future version of a future episode of this show, uh, let me know. You, you clear, you're answering all the questions. It'll be good to have you live here on camera if you're keen uh, to, to help answer because it sounds like you have a lot of the answers. Same to you, Jay. We do need to get you. Jade's already been on the channel a couple of times, but uh, it's always fun to do things like that. So for Android, Caustic, Audio Evolution Workstation, FL Studio, and Synth Synthesizer. And uh, Melody, da, 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 da. yeah, there you go. So Jade's also got some suggestions there. Um, music Arrangement for Melody, yeah. So that's that's another one called Music Studio, which is, I know is something that Jade has used in the past. And Sion says, Drum Pad 24 and Band Lab. See, I don't actually need to answer any of the questions now. I just uh, I just sit back and read Jade and Sion's answers. That's, uh, that's, that's the way to roll, right? Um, hello to you, Connie. Good to have you here on the channel. Connie Matos, hello to you. If anyone has any final questions, comments, or anything you want to talk about, please throw that in the chat now. But if you did miss out, if you're watching this on the replay, you don't need to stress. You don't need to fret. For a couple of reasons, you can put your comments down below 
below after you've hit the like button to tell me that you like these sort of shows go down to the comments you can leave your comment your question anything you want to know down there and i will circle back and return and answer anything that i can as well as the rest of the studio live today community they'll probably beat me to it you can get in touch with me at studiolivetoday.com where you can find ways to support me if you are looking for gear at the moment i just got an e i just checked my email i've got an amazon delivery arriving today i'm leaning pretty heavily on amazon right now because uh there's a few things i needed to get and i kind of don't want to go out at the moment and uh home delivery is the way to go it's all contactless delivery now so uh, here in australia we're taking all this stuff really seriously which is a good thing to see so yes yeah, boxes just arrive on my doorstep and uh, i go out there every day and go hmm, here's some more amazon stuff <laughs> Usually it's supplies at the moment, to be honest. Uh, usually it's food or what cleaning supplies are still available that I can get. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Do we have any other thing? A couple of final ones here. What is the best way? This is from Kylie at Bartholomew. What's the best way to extract audio from video on an iPhone and get that audio into an iTunes playlist? Yes, Kylie, I've, you emailed me or messaged me or you're somewhere. You're somewhere in that system. You're one of the folks that's waiting for me to respond. Uh, so Kylie, what, what you wanted to do is you had, you had video and your camera roll. You wanted to extract the audio and then you wanted to put that into an iTunes playlist. The iTunes playlist side of things is the hardest part. The actual audio extraction, the app Audio Share which I showed earlier is the best way to do that. So I probably don't have time to do a to do a demo of that right now, but I'll send you some more details when I catch up. But if you check out the app Audio Share, what you can do, you can send the video file from your camera roll and then you can actually load it in Audio Share. It will just load the audio wave file of it and then you can save it out as an M4A file, which is the audio format supported across all of iOS. The actual playback, the problem with iTunes is that on your device, the only way to get an iTunes playlist is to export all those M4As using iTunes file sharing to a Mac or a PC, create them as a playlist, and then add them back into your iPhone or iPad. So it's not super simple. You can, however, just create all those files and then use something like VLC player on your iPhone or iPad to play back that playlist of files. So there, there are ways around it, but yes, I'll, I'll try and uh, try and get that. Uh, so yeah, so you've said you've extracted to the iTunes playlist. MP4 doesn't play on other people's playlist. Yeah, the playlist side is what's gonna probably be difficult to do. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, all righty. We, we are going to have to finish up because we're right on the end of time. Uh, thank you for bearing with me. I know there are a few little hiccups with the audio and, and some of the setup there. Um, and apologies to Steve. I did try and play your track here, but uh, I will be uh, talking about that once it's released over the weekend, hopefully, uh, because that is a fantastic new song that everyone needs to listen to. Uh, thank you to Jay, to Sion for all of your help on here. Thank you to everyone who's been here that has asked questions. I hope you got your questions answered satisfactorily. But if you didn't, once again, jump into the comments, put your question down. Down there will be there to help you out thank you everyone keep creating a reminder that we've got more live shows here this weekend which you can catch you can catch home studio q a tomorrow the happy hour live check out jade stars shows that she's got going on i'll make sure i link to those down in the description as well and of course garage band weekly a regular weekly show will be happening as usual on sunday afternoon or evening or monday morning for those here in australia Thank you everyone for being here. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Cheers.